Hey everyone, in this video I will use Docker to containerize the ready to use OS VS2 MVS 3.8J system that runs on top of the Hercules System 370 ESA390 and Z architecture emulator. The Hercules emulator was created by Roger Bowler and currently maintained by Jay Maynard. This emulator can be run under various operating systems like Linux, Solaris, FreeBSD, macOS and various versions of Windows from 98 through 10. Hercules is released under the OSI Certified Open Source Software License, and as such you are free to download and use. However, according to the documentation, this software only emulates the mainframe hardware itself, and you will still need an operating system. Also, they noted that not all features are implemented, and they list what has or hasn't been implemented in the documentation. The MVS 3.8J Turnkey 4 system is an open source operating system built to run on the Hercules mainframe emulator and is based on the original MVS Turnkey version 3 or TK3 created by Volker Banke back in 2002. According to the documentation, the original intention was to replace the publicly accessible TK3 system implemented by Volker and implement enough functionality of the TK3 system to be able to operate and maintain a vintage MVS system. Since I am a novice to MVS 3.8J, I thought this would be a great start in my journey to learn how to use the system along with the mainframe hardware via Hercules and use it as a sandbox platform to learn COBOL. I'd like to be able to share what I learned with others in hopes that I can make it easier for people to get set up and running right away. According to the installation instructions, the TK4 zip archive contains all that we need to get up and running with TK4 and Hercules. What I will do in this video is follow these instructions and instead generate a Docker image from this. Then we will go over how to use this Docker image to run Hercules and TK4 from our local machine. This video is not meant as a tutorial but as a video working session of how I decided to containerize TK4. You are free to follow along or you can completely skip this video and just go straight to my Docker Hub page to run a pre-built image or you can go to my GitHub page and clone my repo and modify the Docker file so that it suits your needs. Links are provided below the video. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see, I'm using a Mac and I'm actually running Catalina, which is the latest version as of this video. And I've already installed prerequisite stuff for Docker, which is just mainly installing um, Docker desktop for Mac. If you're on Windows, there's a Windows version for it. And if you're on Linux, there's a Linux version for it as well. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on how to get that set up and running. So the assumption is you already have that up and running on your local machine and I already have mine running on my Mac. And so if we look back at the instructions for the MVS 3.8J TK4 system, all we really need to do is download the TK4 zip file since it already contains all the things that we need to be able to get up and running. All we're simply doing is instead of installing it on my local Mac, is we're going to install it, uh, we're going to set it up in a Docker image and then we'll instantiate a Docker container from it. Um, and that's pretty much it actually. If we go back to the main uh, MBS 3.8J TK4 system page, you'll see that um, you have a bunch of zip files. The user's manual is the one that you just saw me browsing right now. Um, and then a bunch of the other files that are, if you want to do optional things with it um, and all the updates and all that. So they recommend down here to just download the current system. Okay. So we'll use that one for this uh, working session. Okay. So I'm going to go to my terminal here. I've got nothing set up yet. Uh, I mean, other than the prerequisites, but I haven't set up any Docker image or anything like that. So um, my workspace is Git. Uh, I'm gonna create a separate workspace for TK4. So let's go ahead and create a directory for that. And I'll CD into that. Okay. And we'll start off with creating a Docker file. So we're gonna say VI 
I'm using VI. You can use any editor you want. And Docker file. Okay. Uh, as far as which flavor or distro of Linux to use, um, I tried several. I tried Alpine to make it as small as possible um, uh, prior to this, but I found that Ubuntu was the easiest to work with, and it's not really that much bigger than the... It's not that big of an image anyway as a base image, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So in Docker, to refer reference a Docker image, base image that somebody else has created, you give it the keyword from, so we'll just type in from, and if we just type in Ubuntu, this will download the latest uh, uh, Ubuntu Docker image as my base image. Um, but I actually want to use the LTS version, which is the long, uh, the one that has the extended support or long-term support. So I'm going to put in colon 18.04. Okay. So we'll create a new line here just to make it more readable. And we're going to go ahead and run a, we're going to tell it the work, the work directory where everything's going to be extracted to and all that. So we're going to create a work dir keyword. And then we're going to, from the root directory, you're going to create a subdirectory called tk4. Okay. Uh, the next thing we need is, uh, since this is Ubuntu, we need to, before we can install any packages, we will need to install, I'm sorry, do a app get update. So we're going to say, we're going to use the keyword run. And we're going to type in app get update. And since we're working with a zip file here, uh, from experience, this Docker, uh, Ubuntu Docker base image does not have unzip built into it so we need to tell it to install that package after it does the app get update we're going to say ampersand ampersand which means if this command is successful run the next command so I'm going to say app get install yq so you can answer the question when prompted and I'm going to type in unzip. Okay. So this will install the prerequisite uh, tool unzip for this to that we can unzip this file that's here. And then now we have to tell Docker to download the zip file. So we do that with the keyword add. And then we're going to grab the, the URL. Of the, of the current zip file I'm using TK4 as of this video the latest is version 1.00 I'm going to put that in here okay and you have to give it the destination directory so that's the workspace I mean sorry the work directory that we indicated over here so we'll say forward slash TK4 um, so now it's down, it's going to download the file to the subdirectory tk4. Um, now we need to tell it to unzip the file. So we're going to say run. We're going to give it the run key command. And then we're going to say unzip. And we're going to give it the name. Right. And then, so then that, that will go ahead and extract the archive in the TK4 directory. Um, but we don't want to keep that archive because we want to keep our image light. So we're going to give it, we're going to tell it to remove the archive after it's extracted it. And I'm going to daisy chain the run command here. And I do that in, and you can do that in Linux by, or I, you know, by putting the backslash. And then I can go to the next, uh, Next line and indent it to make it more readable. And 
I'm going to type in rm-rf. tk4 and then the name of the zip file so that'll remove the zip file okay and that's that's about it for now I think uh, we should be able to run this and try this out so we're gonna save it okay we're gonna save now we're gonna actually so now what, what have we done here? We've just we've just given instructions to Docker via the Docker file that we want to build a Docker image. And we're going to go ahead and run the image so that we can instantiate a running container that we can use for testing purposes. So we're going to say Docker build. And then we're going to give it a tag. We're just going to call it TK4. And then dot meaning the current directory that we're in so that tells it in this current directory there's a docker file reference that docker file and build whatever instructions are in there so we're going to hit enter uh, so it's you can see right there that it's downloading ubuntu it's going into the work directory and then it's extracting the art it's downloaded the archive and download uh, uh, okay we got a some kind of error here oh I misspelled install oops okay so let's go ahead and, and put the s in there save it let's try it again so one of the nice things about you know working in the terminal like this is that you know you can iterate you can if you make a mistake it right away tells you there was a mistake and you can go back you can edit the file and then iterate again so let's go ahead and do that so now it's gonna run the command again it's gonna update it's gonna install the packages Okay, looks like now we got past the other error. So you can see it's a pretty hefty archive. It's uh, 238.9 megabytes. Okay, so now it should start extracting. There we go. So it's extracting the TK4 archive and then it's it's done all right so now we have a docker image how do we know if we type in docker images and we can see that there is a TK4 file there image sorry you can see Ubuntu is actually pretty lightweight in itself that's why it didn't go with Alpine anyway um, what's taking up most of the space is actually TK4 and actually this is still kind of big for me uh, but let's go ahead and let's let's test out what we've actually created here so I'm just gonna say docker run and we're gonna run it in interactive mode I think it matters the order of that and then we're gonna say Just gonna give it the Docker image TK4. Okay, so now what it's done is it's grabbed my locally built Docker image called TK4. It's instantiated into a running container, and now it's because I told it to run in interactive mode. It's actually brought me to the prompt within the Docker container. So I can do an ls and it looks like we have everything in there we need to so let's go back over here to the manual um, installation so now we've extracted it this is getting started starting the system 
on a Linux op on a Linux system, open a shell, and and uh, run MVS. So we can see over here in our terminal, we have MVS. So we can we should actually just be able to kick it off right here with the same command. And there it goes. Okay, so this is actually starting up the. TK4 operating system running on top of Hercules. Now, the thing to note here is I'm I'm within the running Docker container, so um, now that it's starting up and everything, and there's kind of really no way for me to test this outside of it. Uh, so we're gonna have to make some changes to that Docker file so that we can try to log into it or at least be able to do a simple test and not have to interactively log into the Docker container. So one of the other things that you'll note in the instructions is that it does require Java. Um, I didn't have to install it because Ubuntu already has Java in there. I believe it as of this version of 18.04, it has um, the JDK 11 or the open JDK 11 so we didn't have to deal with that again one of the reasons why I prefer to use a more common base image like Ubuntu 1804 okay good so we know this is running which is good there's no errors so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just exit out of this okay there we go Be <laughs> right before I was about to exit you can see that it's once you see this, you know it's running and it's running correctly. But I'm gonna exit out of this. It's gonna take a few seconds here. If not, I can open up another terminal over here. Say Docker PS. And then I can then I can say Docker stop and give it the automatically generated name since I didn't specify one. And then try to stop it. Okay, so we go back over here, you see that we're returned back to our host machine, back to the terminal window, and we do a docker ps, which gives us a list of the running docker containers, and you no longer see this, um, this that you saw over here. Okay, so let's make some changes to our Docker file. And actually, before we do that, I wanted to show you that you can test this from outside uh, the, the container. So instead of running it interactively, let's go ahead and um, Let's still run it interactively, but let's run it in, uh, let's open up the port so that we can test our connection to it. So again, we're gonna say Docker TI TK4, but before TK4, which is a Docker tag, image tag, we're gonna put in uh, dash P, and we're gonna port forward the host machine's 3270 port to the internal Docker's, Docker uh, containers port 3270, which TK4 should be listening on. So let's hit enter and let's type in MVS again. So now as this is starting up, uh, we should be able to uh, just type in, use the Telnet client, localhost, and then 3270. Now Telnet is not the appropriate client for uh, to, to, it's not the appropriate 3270 client, but at least it will allow us to confirm connectivity. So we'll let it start up right now. Let's see what happens if I try to run it. Okay, well, it, it is giving me Hercules. Okay, so it's saying Hercules version 4, 
built on the 23rd of June. Okay, so it's running. And they rejected me because I don't have the proper terminal. Um, so, let me get the IP address of my host machine here. So the Docker container is still running. Uh, I'm going to go and grab my IP address in my network. So it's 102. And so this is one of the drawbacks of using Mac OS for stuff like this. I found out the hard way that all of the available free terminal programs or open source programs for Mac OS will not run on Catalina, which is the latest. The reason being is that Apple decided that it's no longer going to support 32-bit applications. So as of Catal as of uh, the latest version, Catalina, all these 32 applications will no longer work on, on this latest version of Mac OS. So I made the mistake of upgrading to Catalina, and now I can't run them. So no problem. I'll switch over to a real... <laughs> A real uh, uh, workhorse will switch over to my Windows machine. Uh, let's see if I can switch over to it right now. Uh, disconnected. Okay, here we go. So, what am I using here? I'm using Vista 32 TN 3270 terminal. Uh, it's a free download, but it's actually a paid application, so uh, I believe there's a limit on how much how long I can use this but at least uh, I can actually you know view the the proper using a proper terminal uh, the, the Hercules host running MVS 3.8 J so let's go ahead and establish that connection so we'll say 192.168.1.102 and the port we need to give it is 3270 so this machine that, that you see here, it's my Windows machine. It's, I just, I only use it to remote from my Mac into it. So it's not even physically attached to my screen here. I'm RDPing into it, but I can use this to do things like this where Mac OS won't support something. I can go in here and, and use it, use it instead. So let's go ahead and click connect. And as soon as we click connect, we can see that we get the login screen for TK4. already getting angry at me because I hit enter in here um, but at least that will tell us that it's actually working okay and that I can connect to it from another machine in my network into my Mac host that's running here and that I can uh, oh it actually it tells you right here client Dev type 3270 connected. Okay. Um, okay, so at least it gives us the ability to test that. Let me go back over here. I think I did something wrong. There's my disconnect here. I'm a complete noob to the TN3270 terminal, so, so I, uh, I apologize. Uh, so let's disconnect. Let's reconnect. Okay, this time it says log on. Earlier it didn't say log on. And if you look at the documentation, the username is Herc. Oh, now I can't log in. Herc01. And then you can enter the password, which is C U L C U later. It's in the documentation. Oops. There we go. So now it's giving me the welcome screen. Gives me the message of the day. And here we are. We're in the TK4 system running from a Docker container. Um, but there's some other things I want to do before I can declare this a success here. One thing is it's running interactively here and I don't want that. I want it to run in as a daemon in, in uh, Docker. 
so that I, don't, I just tell it to run and I don't have to view the screen if I don't want to. Uh, so let's actually get out of this. So let's do a, our Docker stop over here. Docker PS. We say Docker stop. Nice El Gamal. These names are automatically generated because when I tell it to do a Docker run and I give it the, the image, I don't tell it to give it a name. I can, but I'm lazy. So I'm just going to tell it to stop and use that automatically generated name. How do we know it stopped? Do a Docker PS and we see there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and clear our screen here. Let's go back to this other one. You can see it now I'm outside of it. So it's no longer running. I can go back over here to this terminal and say connect to it and it's not going to be able to connect to it. So, okay. Okay, so I mentioned that I didn't like that but this image is 611 megabytes. And um, I suspect part of the reason is that big is because we did an app get update. And what that does is it, you know, it, it updates, it updates Ubuntu. So I, I kind of got, I, I want to skip that step. Like I want to still be able to extract and install the tool to unzip it and all that. But I, I want to create a separate um, step where I'm only running pure Ubuntu and pure TK4. So how do we do that? So let's let's modify our Docker file here. And in in Docker you can actually have separate steps. Uh, I'm not sure that's the right term, but I'm gonna designate this step here as builder. So you can see that after the base image, I said, I give it the keyword as, and then I give it a name. It could be any name. I'm gonna call it builder because that's the convention, but you can call it whatever you want. So what this is gonna say is, I have a separate separate um, layer basically where I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna, this is all gonna be thrown away except what's extracted, okay? And then I'm gonna put it in a separate image. So the way we do that is now we're gonna again denote from Ubuntu 18.04.04, sorry. And the working directory is TK4, just like in the other one. And this time we're gonna use a keyword called copy. And we're gonna say from Builder, so from this machine, copy the TK4 directory that's in there into my root, into my uh, current directory. And my current work, working directory is TK4. So from this, whatever's extracted here, copy it into this. But notice here, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna mention anything about doing an app get update. I'm not gonna install unzip. So that should cut back how much, uh, how big this image is. Um, the other thing is, I kind of want this to automatically start up. So I'm gonna give it the C CMD um, command and a keyword. And what that does is it's gonna tell it when you run this container, this is, a, this is the application you should be running. So I'm gonna say TK4 and then MVS. And just as a naming convention, or just as a you know best practice, you can also list what ports you want to have available open. Now, if we look at the documentation further beyond where it says MVS, um, we'll eventually see where they suggest they point out that there's a another port that we should be referencing. I can't find it here, so let me find it. I think it's uh, 8038. 
Yeah, here it is. So, so you can actually, so that output that we were seeing when it was logging in and everything, we can actually access that from a, a running browser. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to not only expose 30, 3270, but also 8038. Now, just because we're declaring this in the Docker file doesn't mean it's actually going to open these ports or, for, or port forward them. We still need to tell that to Docker when we do the Docker run command. We need to, we need to specify the ports. This is just, again, just simply stating to anybody reading this that, hey, we're, you should expose these ports. And another thing that I found while reading through this was that we should be So the, def the default behavior we see when we run MVS is, is actually the daemon mode. So it's not running in console mode. And although we want this to run within, Do I mean, within Docker, I'm sorry, we want to run the Docker container, instantiated Docker container as a daemon. What I don't want it to run is within the Docker container to run it as daemon mode. The reason is, It'll make it easier to attach if you want to troubleshoot something. It'll make it easier for you to do a Docker attach into the running Docker container and be able to, you know, uh, do some troubleshooting. Whereas if you run it in daemon mode, there is no prompt. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. So they're saying you need to run a script that sets the console mode. Uh, and all it really does is, uh, or to do this, it's that script, all it does is it creates a a console, uh, um, a mode file in a particular directory, and then it um, it gives it, it just um, gives it the word console inside that that text file. So what we're gonna do is actually we'll do that here instead. So in the step where we're extracting and all that, we're just gonna set up another run command, and we're gonna say echo, and we're gonna give it in all caps console. And we're going to append, we're going to append within the TK4 unattended mode. So within the unattended directory, there's a file, it'll create a file called mode. And in, in it, it will give it the, uh, the text console. So let's go ahead and try, try this out now. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll do a Docker run again, I'm being lazy here. Docker run TI. So again, uh, besides port 3270, we're also going to port forward, uh, 8038 from my host machine to the internal Docker's 8038. So, and I'm telling it to run in attach in uh, interactive mode still because I want to see the output. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, oops. I forgot one important step here. I forgot to do a Docker build. Docker build. Okay. Okay, now it's done building my new Docker image. So let's go press arrow up 
And again, we're going to say Docker Run TI port forward 3270 to internal 3270, port forward host 8038 to internal 8038, and we're going to run the Docker Docker image that's tagged with TK4. So let's go ahead and run this. And now one of the things you'll see is there's a little prompt, a little Herc prompt. And that's because we're running it in console mode, which is what we want. So now, if I open up my browser here and I say localhost um, 8038, now it gives me, it's essentially the same thing you're seeing here, but it's giving it to me here as well. So if I do a question mark, you'll see that it updates here, but it's also grabbing the output from here. Okay. And has a bunch of other things I haven't looked at so um, I really can't speak for those but at least this tells me that we're properly port forwarding port 8038 as well as uh, 3270 so let's go back to our Windows machine over here open up that's the IP address on my Mac the port 3270 we connect to it and you see it's not giving me the login screen. That's weird. Okay. Maybe because we're not done booting up here. Well, it tells us it's running. And I'm good with that. One of the things that I was thinking perhaps is, are there any other things in this archive that maybe we should be removing um, that are unnecessary just to save on some space. Let's go ahead and um, exit out of this again. So let's do a, a Docker PS and do a Docker stop. The automatically generated name. finish and we do a docker ps and you can see it's no longer running so let's clear this and over here we can see we're back in our prompt so let's clear this and i just kind of want to poke around and see if there's anything else I, that i can remove that perhaps is not needed uh but now that it's uh well, that's downloaded. Let's do a Docker images and look. Let's look at. Okay, let's look at how much we space we save by doing the separate um, layers. So you can see here that now we've reduced the Docker image from 611 to 343 megabytes. 64 of those are Ubuntu itself. So that's a pretty small. Uh, doc, that's a. I, I mean, I would say. That's as small as that Docker image is gonna get, really. But can we squeeze some more stuff out? Maybe. Let's, let's look at the archive itself. And is there anything in here that we don't need? So we need configuration, DASD, Hercules itself. Let's look at Hercules because this is where I suspect the binaries are. Okay, so we have Darwin. We're not running this on a Mac, so maybe we can do without that. Uh, we probably don't need source and we don't need Windows binaries. So these are already pre-built, so we can probably get rid of those as well. Let's see how much space we can save by getting rid of that stuff. Open up our Docker file here. And let's add another run. Uh, let's 
let's do rm dash rf and tk4 hercules windows okay. tk4 hercules windows ampersand ampersand backslash because we're doing a, a, this in one single run command rm dash rf tk4 hercules darwin ampersand ampersand oops too many backslash and then rm dash rf tk4 hercules source now i'm not an expert in hercules so i don't and tk4 for that matter um, so I don't know what else where we can save uh, space, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. I feel comfortable with that because I'm pretty sure we don't need those things. So we're going to save this. Okay, now we're going to do another Docker build. So one of the things that I've learned from using Docker is when you get when you download archives and you know you're iterating through your Docker file and you just keep building over and over again. Some websites um, or some um, FTP sites or you know websites or you know, they'll start throttling you because you keep requesting the same file over and over again. I don't know if that's a DDoS hack protection kind of thing, but so I'm kind of, I'm trying to be mindful not to keep building over and over again uh, too much, uh, but I do like to iterate on things because it allows me to more easily point out or figure out if something's going wrong. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and run this again. Again, we're running with docker run ti-p 3270. We know that it runs and we know all we did is just delete some directories. So this time, instead of running it interactively and attached, and, and just so you can see that it's not running right now, let's go back to our, to this console thing here, this web-based console, and oh, can't find it, right? So this time we're gonna run it, but we're gonna give it the dash D and this, this, runs the docker uh, container in daemon mode, meaning it's you won't see it. You won't see it. But it, it's actually just running in the background. And it's detached. So we're going to run it. And all it does is it give us the, gives us this, uh, this uh, SHA here. And how do we know it's running? We do a docker PS. Let's clear this so you can. Oh, automatically you can see on the right hand side, my browser is showing the, the, the web console for it. So we know it's running. We can see it here. And this is telling us what ports are being used. Our port forwarded, sorry. And again, we can go back to this. We can hit retry on a connect. And here we are. And let's type in, let's see if we can get into this. Hercules01, I think it's the username. Uh, it won't let me in. I think it won't let. Oh, here we go. So let's type in uh, Hercules or Herc01. Sorry. Oops, one. Herc01. And then it's see you later. Okay. Welcome to TSO. So we're in again. And here we are. So we have a running. We have a running Docker container. Um, of the TK4 uh, system, turnkey system, which is MVS 3.8J, running on top of Hercules, the Hercules mainframe emulator. I hope you enjoyed this video. And Maybe if there's enough interest, I'll make some more. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Bye.